What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Dolphins on Duke. This week we have a certified Duke legend, uh, Coach Tommy Amaker. Um, it's a really fun conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. As always, make sure you're subscribing and leaving a rating. And uh, if you'd rather watch than listen, um, head on over to YouTube. Um, check out our YouTube channel, The Field of 68. And um, that's where you can watch all our episodes from my podcast and all of the rest of the podcasts on the network. Um, yeah, reach out to us uh, at The Field of 68 on Twitter and Dre underscore Dawkins. And if you haven't already, download the Locker Room app. Um, I go there uh, post-game and sometimes pre-game. Um, after Duke game. So um, come on over there, hang out with me, chat about the game, um, what your thoughts were. So yeah, uh, enjoy this one and um, see you next time. All right, this week we got a um, special guest head coach at Harvard and a certified Duke legend, uh, Mr. Tommy Amaker. Thanks for coming on, man. Well, Andre, thank you, man. It's, it's an honor to be with you and everything you said was correct except for that legend part, but I, but I liked it. <laughs> yeah, you got, yeah. I, I, from my perspective, certified Duke legend for sure. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, we start the podcast off <clears throat> the same every week. Um, so first things first is, um, can we get your welcome to Duke moment? Yeah, you know, uh, and I go back 100 years now, so I have to do some, you know, <laughs> thinking about this really uh, strategically. Um, <laughs> but I do remember, you know, a number of years ago, when you think about welcome to Duke, I was... Uh, uh, being recruited by a coach in, in the program. And I was actually, he came to see uh, Johnny Dawkins play in the summer mm -hmm. league game. And I played in the next game in the summer league. And he saw us both for the first time that night. And he actually told my mother, uh, after he told my mother, he, my, somebody introduced him to my mother. And he said to my mother, your son's going to look great in Duke blue. <laughs> um, as, a, as you know how a coach can be. So yeah, yeah, that yeah. was my first, you know, kind of, moment there and and um what a special moment it was and it turned out to be you know uh, our backcourt for three years and, yeah. and um he always referred to as that was one of the nights that he as he would say not me um that um began his tenure and his rise at, as uh, for duke basketball for him yeah that's pretty cool um so you mentioned your mom i was doing i'm doing a little bit of research and um she uh went to your high school practices Oh, and my mom lived well. She didn't. I mean, she would she would take me to high school because I I, I didn't go to a high school in my neighborhood. I went to okay. play for legendary coach Red Jenkins at mm -hmm. Woodson High School, and my mother would drop me off there and pick me up every day. Um, but my mother, she she's a she knows basketball. Yeah. Um, even that she would even call me and talk to me after the games I've been coaching. Even now, even the last <laughs> season we were had a chance to play. She would always get upset about missed free throws and turnovers. So, <laughs> yeah. so you know that's. Uh, so that's, she that's, definitely that's, knows that's basketball. Yeah. yeah, that's a coach. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so when you're getting recruited, um, what were you looking for out of out of a college? You know, man. For me personally, it was. Um, um, I, I knew that I wanted to play in the ACC. That was kind of a dream come true, mm -hmm. coming from my area. You know, uh, I was growing up in the Washington D.C. area, Northern Virginia, and um, you know, my freshman year in high school was when the Big East actually started. So as a younger kid, up until my freshman year in high school, it was, you know, the ACC was kind of it. Yeah. I mean, that was it wasn't any comparison for anybody else, and so to have a chance to be in that league, um, but playing at in the ACC. And then I was really looking for a coach that I knew that I could uh, believe in. I played for my high school coach. I played as a freshman all the way through my senior year uh, varsity for, you know, for my high school coach Jenkins. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to be, you know, play for a coach that I really believed in. Yeah. And then obviously Duke is a great school. So that kind of checked the boxes for me. I remember telling him, Andre, that the, um, you know, the night before my official visit, Mm -hmm. um, and when he called and said, hey, you know, looking forward to coming down and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, uh, I know that I want to play for you. So I, all I know is that if I'm comfortable after this weekend, I'm coming. And, yeah. um, and then Johnny Dawkins being there, you know, somebody that I knew for a long time prior to uh, prior to Duke. So I knew that the program was headed in a certain direction. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, because I mean, that was um, you guys kind of started that pipeline from D.C. to Durham. Um, it's been yeah. it's, it's been hot ever since. <laughs> we, we, we've had a few, uh, you know, a few, few good ones that have made that that 95 to 85. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> um, so you mentioned Johnny um, uh, was there the year before you, and that was kind of the class, um, you know, yes. for, for Duke historians uh, that kind of started it all. So you coming in as a freshman, what was it, what were they like as sophomores? Obviously they weren't um, what they, what they would be yet, but you know, right. They, they were expected to be pretty special. So what, what was it like coming in as a freshman with those guys as sophomores? Well, you know, we were all young. Uh, they mm -hmm. were sophomores and I was a, a freshman. And I really felt, you know, as it, as we started to turn things around, Andre, that that was, uh, you know, I felt like, and they made me feel this way that I was, you know, maybe the missing piece. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was, became the point guard and then Johnny was could really, played all over the backcourt, but he really became in his own to just, just being the scoring guard that we needed. Uh, Billis and Allery were the two guys up front, but the main guy I thought that was an unsung hero, you know, was always David Henderson. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, there's on really good teams. You know, there's a phrase that's used. Um, and a lot of times people don't think of it as, as much as they should, in my opinion, but as a coach, I do that third option. Yeah, yeah. When you have a really good third option, you got a really good team. Absolutely. Uh, Dave, David was 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 that guy for us that really, you know, gave us that third option. Allery was a tremendous, you know, budding star in his own right. Probably one of the more underrated, over two thousand point scorers that you ever you ever know about. That really yeah. doesn't people don't talk about as much. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but, mm -hmm. but he was a great player and really became in his own. But then Johnny was a special guy. Yeah. Um, and then for me, being the quarterback of the team, being that point guard, I think helped make things all go. I thought my biggest contribution, Andre, was that I was I think I really helped Duke establish for Coach K how he wanted to play. Yeah. Uh, as a coach, when you're taking over a program, that can be one of the biggest things you can do is to make sure you have an identity or establishing your style of play. Mm -hmm. And my freshman year was the year that we really established of playing pressure man to man defense and Johnny and I in the backcourt, you know, kind of really, you know, spearheaded that. And uh, yeah. I thought that was a big difference in the rise and the growth, you know, for coach as he developed his brand, his style in our program developed was one of the main reasons we developed the identity of how we were going to play. And then we recruited toward that. Mm -hmm. But my first year with those guys, man, they put their arm around me, you know, that they made me uh, understand the things that they went through as, as first year's freshman guys and, helped me through it. And, um, and then we, at that time, guys weren't leaving early, you know, yeah, or, yeah, yep. so we were able to stay together and grow together. Mm -hmm. And then by the time we became, those guys were seniors and I was a junior, you know, we were in the final four. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, it feels like that's kind of where, like you said, where it started. And then now Duke is, you know, you think of Duke, you, you're, it's kind of known for having that lead guard that's, you know, putting pressure on the ball and things like that. And it kind of started with you and Johnny. So, um, did you expect to come in and start or was it just kind of something that happened and, and what was it like? Cause I know Johnny played the point, um, yeah. his freshman year and then, you know, he kind of slid over to the two uh, yes. to make room for you at the point. So what was that transition like from high school to college and what were you expecting coming in? Yeah. Great question. Uh, you know, and I was fortunate that I, I had always played for really good coaches. Mm -hmm. Um, I think coach, you know, he, He's had so many great players and obviously great teams through the years, but for the longest time, you know, he would always, uh, you know, talk about the guys that he thought that were the most ready to step in as a college player from day one. And for the longest time, and, you know, he, he I was in, kind of included in that category, not because of, you know, me being some, you know, strong guy or, you know, yeah, physically yeah. or whatever, but just, you know, the fundamentals of, you know, understanding what it, you know, what a defense The concepts were and mm -hmm. so I thought he had confidence in me in that way um but he also thought that you know the other players meaning Johnny in particular giving me confidence to, to tell me that look man I mean uh like we need you to be ready you mm -hmm. know because you know I'm, I'm not trying to you know run that point like you know like every possession every play yeah. um so you know I need you to kind of take that off my plate and so for me to have him and particularly him Uh, you know, giving me the confidence. And then certainly coach recruited me like that, that he thought that, we, you know, we could become a really good special backcourt. Uh, but, you know, you never know until you're there, you know, right, as, absolutely, you know absolutely. going through it. And now you're on a college campus and you're dealing with all the other pieces of things that mm -hmm. come with it, uh, trying to learn and grow all in one moment. 
Um, but I was fortunate. I had the support by them, the belief by coach. And then, you know, certainly with, with the players that they, they made me feel like I was needed. And yeah. um, so that's a pretty good combination of things to feel good about. For sure. And you mentioned um, understanding like defensive concepts and things like that coming out of high school. And I mean, I think that's an important point, especially for younger guys. How much do you feel like having a coach in high school that really taught you the game of basketball helped you uh, be prepared for college? Because, you know, I feel like I've seen, you know, guys come in as freshmen and not really know, um, just not really understand basketball. And I think that kind of hinders them a little bit um, at the beginning of their freshman year. So talk a bit about how having a coach like that in high school helped you be ready to come in as a freshman and contribute like you did. I, I think that's a, you know, we, we all have seen great talents, mm-hmm. you know, in high school and how you wonder like what happened, you know, how come they didn't, you know, just give me shot out of the cannon as soon as they hit a college campus. And, and as you know, and I know there's so much that goes into, you know, understanding what, you know, the, the, the style is, you know, terminology, yeah. how, you yeah. know, how the coaches actually coach you now, as opposed to just recruiting you, mm-hmm. um, you know, all, I mean, players are good. Uh, the competition. I mean, there's a lot that goes into somebody being able to step in. Uh, and then there was, you know, obviously there was a void there for me as a opening in terms of the guard positions yeah. um, that the opportunity was there, but you're right about being taught, uh, not just coached, but being mm-hmm. taught, you know, uh, and I was taught from a young age, you know, for a lot, I had a lot of very good coaches, you know, my, my AAU coach, coach Reggie kitchen, my high school coach, coach Red Jenkins, they were outstanding teachers. Uh, it's one of the things that I value in my position now, as much as anything, uh, I view myself as a teacher mm-hmm. just as much as a coach, because there's never been a great coach who wasn't a great teacher. Mm-hmm. And especially at the collegiate level. Yeah. And so I, I've, I've, I've understood that and learned mm-hmm. that. And so that's a big part of understanding concepts and fundamental being fundamentally sound, you know, when you hit campus, yeah. um, you know, that you, you, you've been coached and taught certain aspects of the game. And I was fortunate to have played for and learned under, you know, outstanding teachers of the game. And, you know, and then as you know, being a part of a team, you know, man, be, understanding what it means to be a great teammate. Yeah. You know, a lot of, lot of, you know, young guys don't know that, you know, because they've been the star of their type, their teams and maybe haven't had to know what it means to be a great teammate. They yeah. were just been very good players and that's yeah. nothing wrong with that. But knowing what it means to be a great teammate you know, that, that's that's critical when you want to step on and be a part of something right away. And then the last part of it is that, especially for my position, but I do think this is undervalued in anybody that's going, being a player that people want to play with, mm-hmm. um, you know, like, you know, you, your teammates, not just because you're passing the ball, but, you know, you, you want to be involved and you make sure the guys like having you on their side. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, they can yeah. count on you or, man, this – I know, I know that guy's going to hustle. I know he's going to have my back on defense or uh, I know he's going to have a positive attitude. You know, having guys that you want to play with carries a lot of weight, especially when you're trying to earn your stripes when you first arrive on campus. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so you guys, which kind of like you mentioned earlier, is, is a bit more rare nowadays where you have, you know, a couple of classes that just kind of grow together. Um, and so that core was together for, for three seasons up until Johnny senior year. Talk a bit about how you guys improved from year to year. And, you know, could you feel like, okay, we're starting to figure it out by the time, you know, you got to a junior and Johnny was a senior and you guys made that, that run into the uh, final four. Yeah. You know, we, we, my, my first year was coaches, uh, you know, it was his first NCAA tournament, Mm -hmm. uh, as a coach from army uh, and and through his few years earlier to at Duke. And. So that first year, my freshman year, I thought was a big breakthrough kind of year. We we established our identity as how we wanted to play. We were going to be a a pressure man to man defensive team. You know, we were successful at it, successful enough to where we became relevant. Um, we were young. You know, we started uh, four four sophomores and a freshman. So you're looking at this team, man. They're making some strides. They're growing together. You know, you could you could see it happening and developing. Um, I remember my freshman year when. Coach walks in with the athletic director, Mr. Butters, the legendary mm-hmm. AD, um, and he wanted us to know that he had just signed Coach to a new five-year contract. 
you know, so you start, you, you felt and saw things starting to really come to, into place. You know, yeah. there, there was some stability, there was, you know, credibility being, you know, built up. And so things were moving in a direction. And now we go and play in the NCAA tournament our first year. We lose in the first round, mm -hmm. uh, which was really hard. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a really good year, but we lose in the first round and it was a tough, tough loss for us. Um, and then we, you know, the second year, my sophomore year, we, we, we go to the second round, we lose mm -hmm. to Boston college, um, and then became my third. So you felt like we were growing and developing and getting better and getting older. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that was a key part of it too, you know, getting better, getting older. And then we were one of the things that we were so very lucky. We didn't have a rash of injuries. We were, yeah. We were not a team that was, you know, coach as usual, doesn't play, you know, a whole lot of guys. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, we didn't have anything that would have, you know, kind of knocked us out because of something happened to one of our key guys. You know, we re Danny Ferry became a big recruit. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a freshman my junior year. So that became something that, you know, Billy King came right after me being from the Washington area again. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Um, you know, so those guys were coming right after our Johnny and I came and that really started moving us in a direction of the kind of guys we were recruiting, the way we were going to play. Um, guys were going we to be there. We had nice continuity with things. Kevin Strickland was a North Carolina kid who came that year. Quinn Snyder came with Danny Ferry, John Smith from the Washington area, Kenny Blakeney from the Washington area. We really start developing, you know, you feel like this program is growing, uh, yeah. it's becoming relevant. We're winning. And then we had the breakthrough year where we were really good you know, that Johnny, Mark and Jay's and David's senior year, um, we really were a good, outstanding basketball team. We may not have been the most talented team, but boy, mm -hmm. did we always felt like we knew we played well with each other. Yeah. And we were very confident. Yeah. Um, and we earned that, you know, having Absolutely. gone through some things. And so that kind of built up and it was nice to see that. It, those are kind of things, you know, it's uh it's hard to have those things in this day and time now. Ah, yeah, for sure. The way the for world sure. is and the times have changed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you mentioned going through things. And one of the things I, I say a lot to anyone who will listen is, um, especially at the college level, is um, I feel like in order to win, you have to go through, you have to go through stuff. I, th I think it's very rare that you see a college team that just bursts onto the scene and, you know, and makes a run to the final four. Um, and even, you know, the last national champions, the Virginia team who'd been through stuff. Um, That's right. Especially the year before, uh, you know, the first one seed to lose to a 16. So how how much do you think those experiences of, you know, uh, you know, OK, we broke through, we got to the tournament, we lost in the first round. We broke through again, got to the tournament, got to the second round, then we lost. Like, how much do you think that impacted you guys going into <clears throat> their senior year, your junior year, where, it you know, things just started to click, you know, you guys get 37 wins, 121 straight at one point. Um, how did those experiences kind of shape you guys? You know, you, you, you hit it on the head. Anything that, uh, uh, that is um, uh, worth, you know, uh, longevity or, or anything that you're looking at in terms of sustaining, um, you know, uh, uh, greatness or, or achieving it and then trying to sustain, you, you have probably have gone through some heartbreaking moments and times. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you can look back at all the great programs. Uh, you can look back at professional teams. You can look back at, you know, organizations and businesses uh, where they've had those, you know, those moments where you've suffered, you know, heartbreaking moments or losses. Yeah. Um, and you, you mentioned UVA as a prime example in this day and time in the era mm -hmm. of having just went through that as the first one seed to lose to a 16 on the men's side. Um, and then turning right back around and winning it the next year. I mean, right. that's, that's incredibly gratifying. Yeah. Um, but most of them, you look at the Georgetown, you know, when they lose to Carolina, Michael Jordan shot. Mm -hmm. And then that was heartbreaking loss. And then they turn around two years later and win it. Yeah. Um, Carolina, you know, it took so many years for them to win it and they win it that way. It just, it happens. And it's amazing how those stories are there. Uh, and we were the same way. Like we, yeah. Before we had won the national championship, you know, we had knocked on the door a number of years mm -hmm. losing. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost in the 1990, and I was on the staff then, um, you know, by the largest margin in the history of a national championship game. When yeah. we, when UNLV beats us by 30, and then we have to play them the next year. Mm -hmm. 
in the final four. So that breakthrough, and then you win it. Um, so those moments have always been there in, in society, in the world of sports, and particularly in business. But the key is, you know, are you, are you going to stay after it? Mm-hmm. You know, when you've had that moment where your heart was ripped out, you know, yeah. is that, uh, are you ready to, you know, kind of throw it in or are you ready to, Hey, you know, we, we, we got to go back and get, we got to pick ourselves up and go back again. And yeah. you get rewarded when you pick yourself up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so we were, but, but you're right of going through, some of those moments make you, you know, a, a better champion when you actually are sitting on the top of the mountain. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we go back to back at Duke in 91 and 92, if we didn't go through some of the heartache and troubles that we went through in final fours before that, when mm-hmm. we didn't win it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it. I don't know. A matter of fact, I probably would say that we wouldn't. Yeah. I don't know that. I think that's why sometimes you're able to, when you look on the other side, the Lakers talk a lot about that with Pat Riley. Mm-hmm. You know, those guys, you know, being able to, you know, be three, uh, you know, the three peat and all the things. If they didn't go through some of the stuff that kind of caught them before, yeah. they probably wouldn't have had those moments that they really celebrate. Yes. So, um, again, I was doing a little bit of research. How did you how does one get seven steals twice uh, in in the NCAA tournament? Because. Seven steals for me is is about half a season. Um, so how do you how do you, how do you get seven steals twice in a game? <laughs> well, you got to know the stat keeper. You got to know the stat fisher. You got you got. Oh, you that's why I went wrong. Huh? Yeah, you got to do the homework on that part. Got to make sure you make sure those guys get an extra sandwich or a coke. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but no, you know we we played a certain style, and uh, again that goes back to what we said earlier about a establishing that brand and identity of how we wanted to play. And, um, you know, and, and that one of the things I was, you know, I was a, a fairly decent defensive player. Um, and then, you know, that say allowed so, yeah. me to, you know, play, play the way we played. And, mm-hmm. um, but you, you don't get those things if you don't have good team defense, Yeah, you know, where like, I, I'm not, I'm not comfortable of making a, a play to get a steal. If I know that I don't have, guys behind me that have, you know, if I miss it or if I don't get it, they're going to, they're going to make up for it behind me or have my back, you know? Yeah. So those, all parts of those things really go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> when you were in college, ACC had some really, really good players. Um, so was there any, were there any guys that the night before kind of kept you up? Uh, oh yeah going, going into games <laughs> <laughs> yeah almost yeah like every night uh, um, <laughs> um, you know you, you were right coaches mention a lot about that era you know everybody's era you know you want to think that your era was the best and mm-hmm. you know I mean, you know that's just way you, you you go when you get older but people have talked about you know the the, the 80s uh the mid 80s the early to mid 80s of ACC basketball may have you know one of those eras yeah. Uh, that was just really, really good. And uh, there were the guards in our league at that time that we had to go against night in and night out. I mean, uh, you know, Muggsy Bogues, Kenny mm-hmm. Smith, uh, Spud Webb, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, I'm blanking on different guys now. Um, Mark Keith Price Gatlin was at, at Georgia Maryland. Tech, right? Mark Price, yeah, uh, yeah. Bruce Dalrymple, uh, those guys at Georgia Tech. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was unbelievable. And, yeah. and I would say this, that uh, the guys that, you know, like Muggsy, Muggsy Bogues from Baltimore, so, you know, knew him, you know, prior to college and everything. And we, all of us knew each other from, as you guys, when you came through, you know, you know all the guys before they get to college because you yeah. play with them and whatever. Um, but Muggsy was such a, you know, he was just, you know, I mean, who are we kidding? Five foot three. And I mean, he's the, he was just a wrecking, one man wrecking crew. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was push the ball as fast as anybody, uh, steal the ball as, as well or better than anybody. I mean, you always have to know what, you know, if you're that size, you have to be disruptive. Yeah. And he was. Uh, Spud Webb was just a, a handful to try to guard him. He was so athletic. I mean, mm-hmm. he won the dunk contest at five foot seven. Yeah. 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 I mean, so you, you talk about an incredible, incredible athlete. Yeah. Um, but the guys that, you know, just, I know you didn't ask me this, but there were three guys during that time that were must see guys. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, as, as you guys would say now in your world, must see TV. Mm-hmm. Um, and it were no matter who you cheered for, who you like, but these were three guys that, Hey, I'm watching those guys play. Cause I don't care who, who they're playing against, whatever. 
It was Johnny Dawkins. It yeah. was Lynn Bias, and it was Michael Jordan. Yeah, those were the three guys that you okay. You know, let's let's go. We're gonna watch those guys. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, no matter if you happen to be a fan of whatever team or they they were three guys that were like you you're probably gonna see something that you know yeah. <laughs> you hadn't seen before or you know it just they were just that dynamic yeah. uh you know as players and um so um th- but you're right that that time kenny smith at carolina was just a handful of a guard you know mm-hmm. trying to mark price i mean holy smokes i mean guys that could shoot it and quick and fast and you know and part of my time there was only one year my senior year was the three-point line yep um you know I mean, johnny came as a freshman it was the three-point line then they took it out until i uh until my senior year so he played with it for one year I played with it for one year. So it wasn't, you know, kind of the, the norm, mm. but these guys were still so, so very good and talented. Yeah. What um, accomplishment looking back, team or individual, um, would you say you were most proud of uh, from your time in Duke? Yeah, you know, I would say, you know, uh, one, being captain. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as you know how uh, important and sacred, you know, you know that can be, uh, yeah. you know, to be voted, uh, be thought of as that that kind of, you know, player, teammate, leader, um, to be captain my senior year. Uh, and then certainly, you know, being a guy that, um, you know, was, was the point guard for us. Uh, when I left out of Duke, my, after my, you know, when I, when I graduated, uh, up until that point, uh, I, I had become the all-time winningest player, our class, myself and Martin Nestle, big Marty, seven foot two guy. Mm-hmm. We were the winningest class in the history of Duke basketball. So thinking of us, you know, as, as winners and winning more than anybody else had ever won. The part of that is that, you know, we, we played more games, yep. um, but we still have to win them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You play yeah. Them, but you got to win them. That's important too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those, those things for me and both of those things, hopefully you can, you can realize that are, they're, they're team related for me that yeah. I'm most proud of, you know, being a, a person that was, um, you know, thought of as one of the winningest players ever up until that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then being a, being a captain of our team. Yeah. Um, so you got into coaching pretty early. Um, was that something you always wanted to do or is it just, was it just an opportunity? Um, and what was it like coaching so that early coming back to Duke? Um, yeah. what was it like? A, you were like a year removed. Yeah, I, w- I was a year removed and, and, um, you, you're right. It was very interesting. Uh, um, you, you had know, to be being, coaching guys you played with, right? Yeah, being on the staff of guys that you yeah, you, you play with, your, your teammates. Yeah. And, and, you know, I always, always remember this and really respected the hell out of this, you know, being at the training table. You know, even though I'm on the staff, I, you know, part of my, you know, being a young guy as a graduate assistant, you know, starting coaching, I would still go to the training tables. And that was part of it, too. I, one, I wanted to eat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, and two, sure. <laughs> two, but it was always good that, you know, coach with hey how are the guys doing you know you yeah. know you know not, not that i'm telling on guys but you know just how was everything okay uh so you know there was another layer of having a connection with the players from the staff but i'll never forget danny ferry saying to me at one of the training tables after my year on the, starting on the staff um uh, you know being obviously you know being the, being the star player the, the great player that he became um and it started my senior year you know, when he just, after his sophomore year, he just exploded, mm-hmm. um, became one of the top players in college basketball as a sophomore. Uh, but then my first year on the staff, and then I always remember Danny saying in front of the team, not that he made some kind of, you know, stand up announcement, but we're just, you know, sitting there having a meal. And he just said he wanted, you know, me to know that they would never put me in a tough spot. You know, that mm-hmm. I always, uh, that meant a lot to me because yeah. I've, one of the things I was always wrestling with, you know, like, am I supposed to hear that? Or am I supposed yeah, to right, right. Yeah. say something to that? Or, <laughs> yeah. But he, he said that he wanted everybody to know uh, that they would never, they would never put me in a bad spot or a tough spot. Yeah. And I always respected the hell out of that because that just, it meant, it meant the world to me. I don't even know, he may not even remember it, but yeah. it meant the world to me. And, um, but I was fortunate to get started early. Uh, you know, I got cut in the NBA. I was drafted by the, no longer a team, the Seattle Supersonics, which is OPC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but being cut by them and then coming back and thinking about grad school and coach always had the grad positions open for former players who wanted to go to grad school. And mm-hmm. I took advantage of it. And um, and then, you know, I had a chance to stay on, you know, for, for years after that. But I was very lucky 
because that, you know, the timing of that, if that position isn't available, if, right. you know, it, it just wouldn't have happened. And I was lucky to be able to happen for me right out of college or after I got cut and then, um, you know, coming back to Duke and, and then being a grad assistant and starting. So uh, being very, very lucky for the timing of things and none of us can control timing. You just, mm-hmm. you just want to hopeful that it, it, it works in your favor. Yeah. So you got back to Duke, um, started as GA, got moved over to um, an assistant coach. And then you guys were in the midst of that, like, amazing run. I think it was five straight Final Fours, um, late 80s, early 90s. Um, what What do you think was a were some of the major contributors to having that kind of sustained, sustained success that, you know, you don't really see in college basketball? Yeah, you know, one, one thing that uh, really always was very – helpful for us. And I don't know how coach, you know, goes about it anymore or as much. I I know some of it, but um, he was a big believer in not overdoing things early with us in Mm preseason. And so we were always a little fresher down the stretch, Mm -hmm. you know, like that it's underrated, you know, and and it's something to look at and understand a little bit more. Like we didn't have a whole lot of, you know, I mean, we, we, we played and we lifted. Uh, and we had to do the mile run, yeah. but there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, Hey, we had to do all this track work and, uh, you know, stadiums and, you know, I mean, there's something to be said for that. Like we weren't, we stayed pretty, you know, fresh injury wise. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he always, you know, we wanted guys to make sure that down the stretch, you know, we were as good as we could be mentally and physically. Um, and then, you know, you, you gotta be a little lucky to, to have that yeah. kind of run. I mean, yeah, there's a reason most people don't do it. I mean, you got to be lucky too. You got to mm-hmm. be good and lucky. Um, and, and we were both, but I just thought that his strategy and his philosophy of not wanting to overdo things with guys early, that it allowed us to have, you know, confidence late. Um, you know, we were lucky in moments that we had to win games and last second shots and so yeah. on and so forth. Leitner and different guys. Um, but we, we honestly felt like we were, we were confident and we were fresh down the stretch. Yeah. Um, I know you mentioned earlier about that UNLV game in 1990, um, you know, biggest loss in final. Well, I think, I think, uh, Villanova eclipsed that in the final four for us. So. Okay, we're, good. We're, 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 we're yeah, second, we're, second worst yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're off the hook now, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but yeah, then. Next season, 91, you come back, uh, bring back a lot of the same guys, play that same team um, and win. But, it's, you know, it's not the championship game. It's the it's the it's the semifinal game. What is it like having, you know, gone through that loss and then coming back and, and avenging it in a really tough game and then having to flip the switch and say, OK, no, we got one more thing to do. Yeah. You know, the couple of things with that, Andre, one of the things um, you know, we lost in 1990, uh, and then uh, you know, which I always say, you know, we didn't win a national championship until until Grant Hill showed up. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Grant uh, helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, so I, I tell people all the time. I say, you know, we went to all the Final Fours and all that. I said, but until a big fellow arrived, <laughs> yeah. I said, you know, shit changed after that. <laughs> uh, so with Grant and, and Tony Lang were two, you know, six foot eight, mm-hmm. you know, athletic bookends. Uh, changed things for us. I mean, they, they really did, you know, those guys could just guard anybody. I mean, mm-hmm. I, we literally have, you know, Grant could guard anybody from five ten to six ten, mm-hmm. Um, and he, and he had to various times. And, and Tony Lang was another, you know, young guy, young Colt, you know, that was, gave us another, you know, athletic forward front line, you know, player that we could have. I mean, th- it made, made a big difference, you know, f- when those two guys arrived. Yeah. And in particularly Grant, of course. Um, and then that game you mentioned. So we lose in 90. You know, we get trounced by Vegas. They win the championship. Yeah, it was out in Denver. We come back. Grant's a freshman. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a team that goes on. We have a good year, obviously. Final four. Bobby's still there. Late. I mean, we had, a, you know, some high-level guys, of course. Great players. Yeah. You know, all-time great players. Uh, but we add Grant Hill to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a, you know, th- that's a major major influx of a you know a unique special multi-dimensional the most talented guy to maybe ever play at Duke yeah um and so he's he arrives and it changes everything for our team 
you know, Tony Lang's there, another undervalued, underrated, you know, piece to the puzzle for our team as we grew. Uh, but then that game in the semifinals against Vegas and we win it. And if you ever see some of the clips of that, when that game is, you know, over and we you know, they missed the last three trying to tie it uh, and we win, you know, there's this eruption of celebration and it's, mm -hmm. you know, and if you ever see clips of the end of that game, guys are jumping around hugging and coaches walking out on the floor, you know, like putting his hands that he's not like, you know, all he's put like, you know, settle down, settle down. Like he's already, as you know how he is, mm -hmm. he's already thinking about the next one. Yeah. And he's one of our guys. And I'll tell you this, and maybe you know this, and if you don't, it's, it's just another piece of why we were able to win, you know, that championship on this. If you play those semifinal games on Saturday, you mm -hmm. have practice on Sunday and the national yeah. championship game is on Monday. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting on the bus for the practice on Sunday and guys are, you know, I mean, you know, going to the hotels, all Duke people and, you know, it's, it's chaotic. It's, it's what it should be, but I mean, it's, it's all fun, all great. Um, but we're getting on the bus and he absolutely gets so upset because he recognizes and he was looking for it too. That's how, brilliant yeah. he is yeah. he's looking for guys to be different now he's seeing guys you know coming on with you know hats different and i mean he he was i mean he 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 ripped the guys on the bus told them to get off the bus go back in the hotel and if they're because they were still wallowing in the game that we had just won yeah. the day before and he knew like it's almost like the if you think of the the miracle on ice the 1980 hockey United States hockey team. We beat mm -hmm. the US, beat the Russians, and that was the greatest win. And it was, and everybody thought that was the gold medal game. It wasn't. Right. Yeah, yeah. You still have to come back the next day and beat Finland. Right. Well, we were in the same situation. We had just knocked off, you know, a team that won the championship the year before and was undefeated all the way through up until mm -hmm. we beat them, and they beat us by thirty the year before. And this whole season that they came back, they didn't lose a game all year. Mm -hmm. I still have a T-shirt that was being marketed and sold, you know, UNLV 38, no national champs, because they were already ready <laughs> to have those things being said. And so I have one. Yeah. Uh, I, I still have one in my That's pretty cool. collection. That's yeah. Pretty cool. But we had to beat them, but coach recognized that we did beat them. But if we were just going to be happy with that one and not win the national championship coming up, you know, a day later, mm -hmm. and he told the guys to get off the bus, go back in the hotel, you know, do what they need to do and make sure that they're ready when they get on the bus, they're ready to go get prepared to win a national championship. Yeah. And that set the tone for us to get removed from that great win and get ready for the upcoming challenge. When it was said, it's ironic because it was similar in the hockey thing when, no, you didn't ask me about hockey. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, um, no, you're going. Yeah. When the <laughs> hockey, the hockey coach, you know, the, the legendary coach, you know, uh -huh. um, told the hockey team, you know, that, he, he used some language that I don't know if I can curse on here, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but he used to, after they won the, the, they beat the Russians in the semifinals and it was the, one of the greatest upsets in the history of the sport. Yeah. I mean, it's still yeah. talked about that. He yeah. goes in a locker room and says that if you don't win the next game, you'll take it to your fucking grave. Yeah. That was his post game statement mm -hmm. to those guys, because it was such euphoria that they were, they had won that game. They'd beaten the, the all the all time great team that was supposed to win it all. And, and it was Russia at that time. This was a big, the cold war, you know, U S versus the USSR. Yeah, uh, yeah. So a lot was being on the line anyway, but we were similar in that regard in our own smaller way, of course, but that's how coach viewed it. Yeah. You know, we had done the unthinkable, but we, that, that unthinkable wasn't winning the national championship. Mm -hmm. Um, Love that story. Um, so you were a, an assistant for a while and then you, you know, became associate head um, and, you know, you were getting offers from different schools over the years. What was it that made you um, comfortable enough to, to say no to certain schools until you, you found the one that you really um, felt comfortable taking? Yeah. You know, I, I, you, you really are asking some uh, very astute, questions I, I really mean that because uh thank you you know I, I i didn't know it's like anything else you don't know um you, you just you're hoping that you're can get an opportunity and there were some prior to me going to seton hall mm -hmm. um i i was only 31 years old you know when i 
uh, took the head job at Seton Hall and yeah. I had other opportunities prior to that. And uh, I, for more than anything, I just thought that I was ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that it was happened to be, Hey, this job is the one that's that I, you know, I, I just knew that, that the timing of it was like, I'm ready to go give it a try. Yeah. Um, and the Seton Hall opportunity presented itself. Uh, and I was very lucky and fortunate that, that they did, you know, taking a, taking a chance on me as a, you know, a young 31 year old guy who had never been a head coach. Um, and at, at that level of a job I was the youngest coach in the history of the big East conference. Um, and they were taking a chance on me. They believed in me and I, I was very lucky, uh, very proud of that. Um, but you know, that that's when you're, you're also naive and stupid uh, <laughs> yeah. as, as a young guy thinking that, you know, you know, I had no idea, you know, that all that, what, what this is going to mean being that young and, inexperienced um Mm -hmm. but you you know you always try to say you know you can't equate uh age with experience yeah there's some young people who are very experienced Mm -hmm. uh there may be some older people who are very inexperienced yeah absolutely Uh, so don't don't get those things confused uh and so i was lucky uh to have the opportunity but felt confident in myself and that's where i've always uh like you you know you you uh you, you 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 bet on yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you've done the work, you know, you, you, you've been doing everything you can to prepare yourself and, uh, and you want to go and, you know, give it, give it your best shot. And I always remember going to the, going to try to talk to coach before the press conference, I had to fly up to New Jersey for the press conference. And I just didn't know, I was like, coach, I, I'm sure they're going to ask a whole lot of questions. You know, what do you think some of the things I should be prepared for or whatever? And he just cut me off. He said, stop. He said, don't, he said, you just be yourself. Mm-hmm. And that was the biggest confidence booster that I could, I, I, he didn't, I mean, I'm sure he did in his own way, of, you know, but that let me know right there. Like, I don't have to try to worry about what I need to say, just be me. Yeah. And that's what he, he said, just be yourself. And that gave me an incredible amount of confidence, you know, when I stepped off the plane and, you know, and I was there and ready to tackle, you know, the job and, become a part of that institution in that community. Yeah. So you've been at Seton Hall, go to Michigan, um, now at Harvard for a little while now. Are you, are you like a big fan of winter or is yeah. <laughs> what's, going, what's up with that? Yeah. What's up with that? Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been like, what's up with that? Ever since, ever since leaving out of Durham, right? I'm yeah. Like, yeah. You know, uh, you don't like the sun. What's, what's yeah, going on? I'm like, I, you know what, man, it's, it's been, it's been crazy how that has happened. Um, one, you know, taking the jobs, uh, you know, getting fired at Michigan, mm-hmm. uh, you know, within 30 days, you know, coming and being on board at Harvard. So it's been a little bit of a whirlwind in, in some ways, but but you're right, you know, the locations have, you know, and they're all great places, you know, in, yeah. in terms of communities and parts of the country, you know, the Midwest, Northeast, and now New England. Um, you know, we've loved, my wife and I, we've loved living in all, all the three areas and obviously love living you know, in Durham. Um, mm-hmm. So we, we've been lucky to have had great schools, uh, but more importantly, you know, outstanding people that we've been able to work with and, and work for. Yeah. All right. Uh, I know you got to get out of here. So, uh, but I do need one last thing from you. Um, your all time starting five, all time Duke starting five. You got to win one oh. game. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh. Got to win one game. I need five guys. Well, I'm gonna get. Let me see. Let me see. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with Johnny Dawkins, Grant Hill. Okay. Um. I. I don't. I may have to go with six. Bobby Hurley, Jay Will. Uh, I would probably have to go with uh, uh, Elton Brand. Uh, okay. And then I would have to go with uh, either Leitner or Ferry, just depending on which one, you know, <laughs> okay. w- which one was healthy. You know, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. That, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's the crew. You, yeah. you take a five out of that crew and I'll right, say, yeah. you'll be all right. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we got a good shot. I think we got a yeah, good shot of winning right. that game. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even mention Battier, right? I know, I know. That's the problem. When you narrow it down to five, it's, it's, too, yeah. it's that's tough. Man, <laughs> that, that's, that's hard stuff right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tough. yeah. Um, uh, but coach Amaker, I uh, appreciate the time today, man. Um, it was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. Um, big fan of you and thank um, you. good luck. Um, hopefully next season Ivy league is back playing basketball and, uh, you guys are back yes. in the tournament. Yes. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm great to see all the great things you're doing. Proud of you. 
Um, and if I'm any way to keep assisting in any way, you know I'm here. And uh, congratulations on all your great success. Thank you. I appreciate it.